Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to DND for the invitation. Thank you so much, Mr. Borda. Thank you for sitting in the first row. Um, as you just heard, I'm a private collector of contemporary art with a special focus on time-based media. I'm very, very happy to have the possibility to give you an insight into the collection and into the collection's concept. And I will talk about a little bit how to build up a private media art collection. I spent the whole day here today at the conference and I heard so many interesting things about strategies, business models and transforming processes in the digital world. Now, please, let's talk about art. And um, I will illustrate my thoughts with um, some images and some video examples. So let's start. Open your eyes and close the mouth. So um, the first image you see, it's just an image of the entrance area of the collection and it shows a permanent installation by the, by the artist Douglas Gordon. It is a quote, so please don't take it seriously. In the 21st century, digitization has reached the field of contemporary art. And this might be perhaps one of the reasons why I got the invitation to talk to you here today. Uh, another reason might be perhaps that um, Hubert Burda is quite interesting in art, and as you told me yesterday, you don't have so much time and to concentrate on to building up a collection, so maybe this changes after this. <laughs> In the digital world, um, full of generated images, the task of art has changed radically in terms of the relations between image and text, language and body, space, subject and object. The function of art is not mainly to generate unique original images, but to seek reflection. Being asked to speak here today, um, I took the opportunity to analyze what digital technologies mean for my collection, the Julia Stoschek collection. And I was quite surprised because I had never thought about it before in that way. And now I will present you the results. Let's start with the main facts on the collection. The collection is based in Düsseldorf in Germany and it opened to the public in 2007. You're all invited, so whenever you come to Düsseldorf, please pass by. I would love to show you the collection. And each year we present about two different exhibitions to show several parts of the collection. I'm also very interested in collaborations with various public institutions, both in Germany and abroad. And just to let you know, there are around 650 art pieces part of the collection. The base of the collection is an old factory building, which you can see. It is from 1907 and it's landmarked. And it was renovated by the Berlin-based architecture team Kühn Malvetzi. And we have um, two exhibition floors and an exhibition space around 2,500 square meters and we have a cinema and a storage in the basement. Um, to summarize some of the key aspects of the collection's concept, I would like to point out three aspects. So, first of all, I try to draw a line starting from the 60s until now. For your understanding, the 60s was the beginning of video art, so what I'll do, on one hand, I follow the historical artists, so I acquire historical art pieces, like from Nauman, Oconchi, Gordon, Mata Clark, and on the other hand, I follow the emerging artists, because I'm very interested in the interrelation. Um, I'm also interested in a deeper involvement with an artist oeuvre, so for your understanding, I don't collect 100 different art pieces from 100 artists. What I love to do is to follow an artist over a very long period of time. And the third aspect of the, co of the concept of the collection, this sounds very easy, but I can tell you it is not. I'll try to acquire key pieces, masterpieces, large-scale installation and important groups of work because I want to capture the heart of an artist oeuvre and I want to bring together a coherent body of works. This is also very important with respect to loan strategies with other public institutions. 
I would like to give you a short definition of time-based media art. Time-based media art and time-based art in general are terms that are used quite often in these days and they contain many different aspects such as film video, installations, photography and performance art. For me, the moving image is the focal point of the definition. So in terms of this panel, I feel the need to distinguish that I don't collect net art which is perhaps the art form that is most closely linked with the digital technologies. Net art is a specific art form that developed in the mid-90s. Its medium is the internet, and it is accessible at any time and anywhere. And as a viewer, as a consumer, you experience it only via your laptop or via your computer. This is not the case, the artworks I collect. Instead of being universally available via the internet, the artworks of my collection need to be installed. They need to be installed in an exhibition space with specific conditions with respect to both space and time. To illustrate my point of view, I will talk about my, my first experience with time-based media art, with a very special time-based media art installation. And I really do hope that, that my passion for this art form uh, will reach you as well. It all happened in uh, 2003. I visited uh, Gagosian Gallery and there was a show dedicated to Douglas Gordon. And on show was a three-channel installation, as you can see, two big um, uh, projections and one monitor on the ground. And uh, on show was one of his early, early masterpieces with the title Play Dead Real Time, where an elephant plays his own death. I was so fascinated by the idea to train an animal to do what it normally wouldn't do, to lie down and play dead. So this work touched me so much emotionally, physically and synesthetically that this piece was and still is ever in my mind. Just to let you know, when I mention the term synesthesia, I don't use it in a neurological sense. I use it much more in the sense of Gestalt to express the special characteristics of time-based media art. Time-based media art always engages your multiple senses. So you can hear it, you can see it, and you can feel it. And in the case of play dead real time, as you can see here, your body moves within a three-channel installation. The images are moving in time, the camera is moving around the elephant, and the elephant itself is moving. But the whole is others than the sum of its parts. So this was really, really a special experience for me. I can say a life-changing moment, and I felt so much in love to time-based media art that I decided I have to follow this medium. I had to, st I had to start to collect time-based media art. However, I need to tell you that this wonderful art piece is not part of my collection. Unfortunately, still it was, and it is sold out. But what I'll try to do is to travel wherever and whenever it is installed worldwide. And I can tell you, I still get goosebumps all the time I see it. After having talked my first encounter with a video installation with time-based media art, maybe you might be interested why I'm so focused on time-based media art. Video, which is part of time-based media art, is the medium of my generation, and I can identify with it. As many of you, I grew up with new media, in my case, especially with MTV and TV in general. So all important events of my childhood were captured on video, and my family was and still is always interested in the latest technologies. So, video was always a very important part of my life, and it suits my personality very well. I love images, I love the movement, so for sure, I love the moving image. We do live in a digital age. Contemporaneity plays the biggest role for my collection. I believe the most contemporary artistic expression manifests itself in the most contemporary media which currently means 
digital technologies. The ephemeral, as a defining feature of our times, is in my opinion in the best way reflected in the moving image. Always changing, never standing still. In addition, as you all know, digital technologies gives us the possibility to continually store and access data for an infinite amount of time in any format. I don't know if this is heaven or hell. So there is a tension between the ephemeral and the idea of storage or archive in general. As a collector of contemporary art, especially of time-based media art, I live this tension between the fleeting, the contemporary, and the permanent, the collection. So what I really wish to do is um, to create an image of the social and cultural conditions of my generation. Since Gutenberg invented the book press, there hasn't been a more radical socio-cultural change in history than digitization and the internet. And I want to reflect this revolution with the collection. And this is the reason why I do collect time-based media art. Um, after talking so much about in theory, now I really would like to give you some, some examples, some video examples of artworks of the collection that reflect on digital technologies. And let's start with a solo exhibition we had last year dedicated to the American artist Sturtevant. Sturtevant is a very interesting artist to talk about in relation to digital technologies in the art context. Her early work revolved very much around questions of authorship and originality. Since the 60s, she had used the process of recreating artworks by her contemporaries, just as Andy Warhol, which you can see here, Marcel Duchamp and Josef Beuys. In doing so, she questioned the traditional understanding of artistic creative processes. In the age of the digital revolution, she felt that the question of originality and the idea of handmade repetition were outdated. Since 2000, she concentrated on the moving image. She combined images from mass media with her own filmed material, which you can see here in her work, Elastic Tango, which is part of the collection from 2011. It was shown at the Venice Biennial and she won the Golden Lion 2011. So, if I talk before about the importance of contemporaneity, I can tell you Sturtevant is for me one of the most yeah, important contemporary artists. Because, just think about, with the age of 75, 75, she started doing media-based work in reaction how much our world has changed in the 21st century. So, the digital age was never a threat to her. Instead, it was a challenge and an absolutely inspiration for her. The show we did with her in Düsseldorf was the last show she curated herself before she passed away May last year. And it was the first and only show that was focused on such a detail on her media-based work. Moving on to a younger generation, as you all know, there's currently a lot of buzz around the digital natives, all born since the 80s. And this artistic generation um, is using the laptop, they use digital animations, they use the latest digital technologies, and even some of them don't have a studio space anymore. So they just work with a computer or with a laptop. I'm currently very, very interested in a British artist um, named Helen Martin. She's based in London, and um, she works with these latest digital technologies, especially with digital animation. What's quite interesting, she still remains interested in objects and installations. And I would like to show you an example of one of her works from 2012 from the collection with the title Avion Disease. And it is an animation video that brings together layers of images of different social contexts such as advertisements, architecture, food and furniture, as well as layers of language spoken in voiceover by different speakers. So digital technologies enable her 
to make collages of different contexts and objects as digital images to create absolutely new worlds and to create absolutely new environments. So if you ask yourself or me if art is still collectible in the digital age, I can only say yes, yes it is. It's only the beginning. I strongly believe that this will not change and I would like to make a clear statement. I absolutely believe in the future of time-based media art because the digital age opens up so many new possibilities for artists as well as for society in general. My thinking is based in the here and now and orientated towards the future and it's a great experience to be part of this digital revolution. I do think an engagement with contemporary art and especially with time-based media art is relevant to our lives. Time-based media art had such a difficult standing for a very, very long time. But rejection has always been a part of contemporary art. I do not want to reject, I want to, I want to move forwards, and I leave it to the next generation to decide on the importance of time-based media art for themselves. So, to illustrate the way I look towards the future, I will borrow some words from the British artist Mark Leckie, whose time-based media work is a very, very important part of my collection. His artistic approach relates much about pop culture, consumerism and technology. And his solo show with the title As If will open here in Munich end of next week at Haus der Kunst. So whenever you have the possibility or you're still here, so please go to Haus der Kunst and have a look at this really extraordinary show. It revolves around um, techno-animism. So, and in a recent interview with Moose magazine, Mark Leckie was asked how his reception, how his perception, sorry, had changed in the response to digital technologies. And in this very positive comment, he said that today and in the future, he sees more potential for interactions with things, be it objects in nature, animals or humans, that have remained silent in the past. Via digital technologies, these things become addressable. He says, and I quote, that universal addressability and network of things creates this enchant landscape. Magic is literally in the air, and this is an altered state and an endlessly productive one. I will leave you with this comment and just want to say thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.